Hello everyone, I am back with some more sourdough bread recipes. So thanks for coming along and I hope you find this video helpful. So here I've taken my dough straight out of the fridge. I'm going to divide it into three different things. I'm going to show you three things that I make out of the same dough. I have found that it's easier for me to have one dough that I can use for everything that I'm going to need. And yes, there are times when I change up the recipe and I'll talk about that later on. But it's nice to be able to have one recipe as a go-to that I know can make a bunch of different things so that I don't have to worry about each time I want to make a different kind of dough that I have to redo everything and think ahead far enough to be able to actually get that all done. So first I'm going to show you how I make my English muffins. I take the dough and I just kind of pat it out until it's about, I don't know, half an inch-ish thick. And then I go ahead and cut out my English muffins. I have always really enjoyed English muffins. They're so fun and versatile. We use them for sandwiches in the morning, breakfast sandwich type things. We use them for little pizzas, individual pizza sizes for the kids. When I was a kid, this was like one of my favorite things. And I was so excited when I learned how to make it because it was one of those things that's a little bit more time consuming that we had only once in a while. And so now I love to make them all the time. So I just sprinkled with some cornmeal onto a parchment paper and let them rise then for 15 to however long you like to let them sit and rise. The longer you let them rise, the more sour of a taste your bread is going to have. So just keep that in mind as you're going about. So now I'm going to make some dinner rolls or buns or whatever you want to call them. So here I'm just going to roll them out. The cool thing about this recipe is you can just pull out enough for dinner. Let's say there's just a few of you, you can easily pull out three or four and just roll the buns out quickly and bake them. Or if you have a large family, you can go ahead and do all of it. But it allows you to be able to do fresh bread for as many meals as you would like. I found that this, especially doing buns or English muffins, is a great way to bring your kids in. They can help roll and cookie cut or, you know, help with the English muffins and cutting them. I think it's amazing when we can bring our children into our daily task and they can help us with those. So this is what I talked about the other day of kind of tenting your rolls or your bread or whatever it is you're making to kind of trap the steam in. You can also um, put water in a metal bowl in the bottom of your oven and that will also help with the steam when you're baking. So next we're on to cinnamon rolls. Now my kids were asking for these, <laughs> they love cinnamon rolls and every chance they get they try to get me to make them, which is great. I love cinnamon rolls too, but they're one of those things that I don't do as often. So they were super excited this morning that I decided to make them cinnamon rolls. So again, we're gonna roll out or pat out the dough. And then to that, we will add our cinnamon and sugar that we have pre-mixed up. I think I did a cup here to two tablespoons of cinnamon. And I also put my um, <clears throat> butter in with, I used coconut oil this morning, but you can put your butter or um, coconut oil in with your cinnamon and sugar. And it just makes it a little easier to get it all spread out evenly and nicely. So I'm curious how many of you like pecans or some other kind of nut or raisins in your cinnamon rolls. My children don't, but I absolutely love pecans in my cinnamon rolls. But this morning I decided not to put them in and just put them in the bottom of the pan. So now that I have the roll all rolled up, now I'm going to go ahead and cut it up. What you see in the bottom of the pan is a caramel sauce that I had made. Uh, it just adds a little extra gooiness to it and my children love it. And it's a great way to get them a little extra sugar. There was a store when I was growing up that sold these cinnamon rolls and they were absolutely ginormous. They were like a four by four huge cube that would get so full of sugar and these cinnamon rolls reminded me so much of them. It's great childhood memories. So anyways once we get them all put into the pan I'm going to go ahead again and put the tin foil over the top and let them rise for a little bit and go ahead and bake them. Once we have let them sit out. I don't know, sometimes I let them sit out for 30 minutes, sometimes it's two hours. It just kind of depends on how my day is going. And you can literally start baking these at any point after rolling them. They rise up fine in the oven. I have found though that the longer they sit out, it can give them a little bit more rise, but I don't know, I always find they're great either way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and feed my starter. There were some questions on my other video asking about the starter specifically. 
so we'll go through that a little bit here so i have in my jar i don't know the two cups ish that i did the other day and you can kind of see what was left in the jar that's why i leave in the jar to refeed so it's one to two cups of starter and then we're going to add in our two tablespoons of salt and our four cups of water and this water usually should be lukewarm or nice and warm water but if it's cold water like it was this morning it still works so go ahead and stir it up and then we're going to add our eight cups of flour to this recipe now even though this recipe works great for the english muffins and the rolls and the cinnamon rolls if i have extra time and i have thought ahead of time oftentimes i will add a third of a cup of some kind of oil or fat to this so that could be avocado oil or coconut oil or butter or ghee or anything in those kind of you know some kind of fat that it does make a little bit of a softer roll but again even if it's not in there it doesn't make that big of a difference so that's why i will use this bread recipe for everything the bread as well as the rolls and everything i also try to get a new recipe going once i have uh, my bread rising or baking in the oven this just makes it a lot simpler for me because there's no better time than right now to get our bread started for our future self so i'm gonna go ahead and mix it up again and as and also get my starter going again now i know a lot of people measure out and weigh out their starter exactly that i have not done very much i used to do it in the beginning and it became a time consuming thing that made me stop doing sourdough for a while because it was an extra thing i had to pull out it was an extra step and so you know maybe you're in the stage of life where that's something that you like to do and you like to measure it out and do the perfect four to one to one or one to four to four or two to two or however you want to go about it but know that if you're not in that season of life right now and you need something that's just good bread to get you through eyeballing it works great too yes you will not always end up with the exact same consistent thing that you do when you perfectly weigh out everything but sometimes it's not about perfect it's about having good food so now that my english muffins have raised for about 30 ish minutes i'm going to go ahead and dry fry them so i'm just going to put them in a heated skillet and let them brown on one side flip them over brown the other side and then usually I find once I've done both sides, they're still a little doughy in the inside. And so I usually pop them into the oven for 10 to 15 minutes to finish them up and make sure that they are cooked all the way through. Now, when I was growing up, we used an electric griddle and we could always come out with the exact perfect muffins every single time, perfectly cooked through. So you can also try that. So here are our finished cinnamon rolls and their caramel sauce as well as our English muffins and dinner rolls. I hope this has been helpful and that you will also try this recipe. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will get back to them. Thanks for coming along and watching.